Hey guys, welcome back. Now, with Ethereum being beaten down again and again over the past year, struggling to catch a bid and underperforming pretty much, well, everything, this is why so many people have been saying that Ethereum is dead. Well, I for one have never lost hope and in this video I'll be explaining why I think a massive Ethereum wealth transfer is going to be happening very soon as Ethereum rises from the ashes once again. In this video, we'll be covering the giant ETH BTC wedge pattern that's ready to break out We'll do a health checkup on the Ethereum ecosystem and I'll show you why it's never looks stronger. And then we'll finish with how high things could be going and the returns that could be coming just next year. Okay, so lots of good stuff to cover. And first up, let's take a look at this giant wedge pattern that's ready to blow. Okay, so today we're starting off with the Ethereum BTC chart. Not something I regularly talk about. However, something is going on which is definitely worth talking about. And that is a nice squeeze where ultimately we're getting really close to the big breakout. And I'll discuss in a second why I think this is likely coming in January. So this goes all the way back to 2016. And as you can see, the range goes from it peaked out June 17. So that was the blow off year of 2017 at 0 0.15. It goes down to 14, 13, 12, 11, 0 0.1, then 0 0.087654. It has been as low bottoming double zero one and then it seems to be putting in a higher high each time there's this one a little bit higher and this is where we're at right now so this is suggesting that it's likely just bottomed or there could be a tiny bit more to go before we get a breakout and there is a long way to go as Ethereum skyrockets up against BTC. Now, check it out. Ever since this top here, this was the market top, November 2021. And for three years, Ethereum has been bleeding against BTC. Three long years. I've held Ethereum ever since 2017. It had been bleeding for one, two years before I went all in in crypto and a segment was in Ethereum. Obviously, super hard to catch the ultimate bottom. And this is where we're at right now. So this massive wedge of nine years is coming to its penultimate close. And why do I think that it's January that we're going to see Ethereum break out and off to the races? Well, simply it's because historically Q1 is where Ethereum makes its move. In fact, it's Q1 that is the best quarter for Ethereum. The average being 92% compared to Bitcoin's 56%. However, probably the result in 2017 skewed that over 500%, which is crazy. But if we look at the median, it's still a 30% gain versus Bitcoin's 3%. So for Bitcoin, it's actually Q4, which is what we're in right now, which is where Bitcoin really shines, which is why you're seeing loads of attention and everyone's talking about Bitcoin and everybody hates Ethereum. However, this is going to change, I think, Q1 next year. Now, let's just look at the last halving year. So this was 2020. And we can see, even though Ethereum did well, over 100% Q4 in the last halving, Bitcoin just outshined it. A hundred and almost 70% massive. But then in Q1, even though Bitcoin did a hundred percent, Ethereum did a hundred and sixty percent with a massive correction 
Q2, where Ethereum still went up 20%, then it outperformed Bitcoin Q3 and Q4. So it's the post halving year, which is ridiculously good for Ethereum. And in six weeks, we're about to start that year. So that's why I think Q1 January is likely where Ether the Ethereum rocket takes off. Now, next up, if it's true that Ethereum is dead, then the ecosystem, not just its price, would be struggling. And there'd be loads of signs that Ethereum is slowly dying. So let's do a quick health checkup on the Ethereum ecosystem. Checking back in to Ethereum's unique addresses, and do we see that Ethereum is dying? Well, quite the opposite. It's still going nicely up and to the right, and it's now closing in on 300 million unique addresses. So the network just continues to grow up, up, and away. Clearly no sign that Ethereum is dead here. Let's just check in with DeFi, one of Ethereum's biggest and best use cases. And what do we see? Is Ethereum now getting crushed? Well, no, Ethereum continues to dominate DeFi and it has the vast majority of total value locked. Now, with everyone talking about Solana recently, this is how much of the value is being kept on Solana, and they are number two. You can see they are still vastly behind Ethereum, and then it just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, and everything else is in this last slice here. So Ethereum is not dead here, still dominating DeFi, Let's look at applications. So these are the dApps, decentralized applications, and lots of different things to sort it by, but let's see how much volume, dollar volume, is actually being put through these applications. When we sort it by the application volume, is Ethereum dead at the bottom? No, still at the top, 40 billion, the second being only six, the third being one, and then just fractions of one. So again, when it comes to applications, right now, Ethereum is dominating. No signs of being dead here. And then finally, let's take a look at what's going on with the developers. And I like to call the developers the smart money because these guys, unlike your small retail investor on social media, actually understands these protocols. They can tell you the ins and outs of how they actually work beneath the hood, not just which price is happening to be doubling and tripling right now. And is Ethereum dead? Have the developers abandoned Ethereum? Well, if Ethereum was dead, then why does it have 2,788 full-time developers? And not just that, Base is built on Ethereum, so add these into Ethereum. Polygon built on Ethereum, add that in. Then you've got Arbitrum, Scroll, Optimism, add all those in as well. Clearly, Ethereum is still dominating and attracting the vast majority of developers. So the big question is then, why are so many people saying that Ethereum is done, Ethereum is dead, Ethereum is old tech? Well, here is the reason. So trying to keep things super, super simple, this guy here represents the average retail investor. And by the way, I'm not being derogatory to retail investors. I'm in this category myself. So this includes me. And then this represents the typical institution, a company, a corporation, and the like. So here are some subtle differences. And the main point is that these people are looking for different things in their digital assets. 
This guy just wants things to 10x, 20x, 50x, 100x. So meme coins right now are looking really, really attractive to this guy. These people would rather have liquidity. So they'd like to build on a platform that they know is going to be here next month. They know is going to be here next year. And for them, a 50% return would be a massive return. When it comes to the actual blockchain, this guy here is it's all about speed. Give me the fastest blockchain, unless it's doing a million TPS, then it's old tech, where these people give me a blockchain that is very, very secure. It's not going to break. It's going to be here next year and it just needs to be fast enough. And this guy, if crypto is racing and off to the moon at two o'clock in the morning, could likely just wake up and jump in to the latest hot coin where these people likely have decision making units. If you want to make a serious investment, you'll have to put together a presentation. You'll have to present it to a group of people and it will take time to make a purchase. And it's these people that you see on social media because that's what you're plugged into. You're hearing this person's opinion all the time, wanting the fastest one, wanting things to 10, 20 X and saying Ethereum is dead. These people, you're just not going to hear them on social media. But what you will see is this. For example, the world's largest, most successful investment company, BlackRock, launching Ethereum ETFs, launching products on Ethereum. And also they launched their build product, which is the largest tokenized treasury fund. So the massive institutions are building and launching products on Ethereum. And it's not just BlackRock. We have banks from all around the world launching tokenized funds on Ethereum. And most recently, we have pension funds investing money into Ethereum. So this is the stuff that's happening that you don't really see and you're not going to hear it on social media. So ultimately, this explains why you keep hearing Ethereum is dead and why the opposite is probably true. Now, to finish up, we're going to quickly take a look at the opportunity Bitcoin and Ethereum gives and the return you can make for next year. So again, keeping things super, super simple, and this is something that institutions are going to be keeping an eye on. And it's very, very simple math. So it, next year, 2025, if Bitcoin gets to two times its previous all time high, which was around 70,000. So this would give a Bitcoin price of $140,000. And from today's price right now, that's a 60% return. Now, the same thing, if Ethereum gets to two times its previous all time high next year, and its all time high was close to $5,000. This means it would be going to 10,000. And this is the difference in returns, a 60% return versus over 200%. And this is actually being nice to Ethereum because historically in previous cycles, Ethereum doesn't just keep pace with Bitcoin, it outperforms it normally doing multiples of Bitcoin. So even if Bitcoin went to 200,000, it just means even more for Ethereum. So just to get reversion to the mean, institutions are going to be well aware of this fact. And remember, one of the most important things in investing is buy low, sell high. So which one is high and which one is low? And this is what I think is going to play out for the two blue chip cryptos in 2025. With Ethereum being beaten down again and again over the past year, many have said that Ethereum is dead. However, I believe likely starting in January, we're going to be seeing a massive wealth transfer as capital begins rotating from BTC into Ethereum. 
Remember, the aim of the game is to buy low, sell high. And which one is low and which one is high? Reversion to the mean. The ecosystem has never looked stronger with continued exponential growth in users. It's still dominating DeFi, it's still dominating applications, and it's still got the most full-time developers and for a reason. Now, the important point is that it's the small retail investor on social media that is saying Ethereum is dead, where the massive institutions are all building and launching products on Ethereum. Retail's focus right now, and what you constantly hear a lot about, is meme coins. And institutions don't really care about meme coins. Remember, they both want different things from their crypto assets. So there you are guys, hope you enjoyed. Now you tell me, do you think there'll be a massive rotation coming January? Let me know below. Or if you've got any questions or comments, post them below as well. However, just remember to get rid of 100% of the comment spam and trading bots that plague YouTube comments, we are trying out the new Super Thanks commenting system. So to get your question or comment read and replied to, or just to say thanks, then use super thanks below. And for now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.